This explorer ventured out into the Utah desert and then mysteriously disappeared. The human spirit naturally craves adventure, and those who are brave enough to explore the great unknown are usually rewarded with memories that last a lifetime. Sometimes though, exploring new terrain can also come with a great deal of risk, up to and including the chance of never returning home. For one adventurer from California, the call of the wild led him on a journey into the Utah wilderness that he hoped would become the greatest adventure of his life. In the end, it did, but not nearly in the way what he expected. Do you enjoy venturing out into the unknown? Let us know in the comments section below, and then be sure to leave this story a like and subscribe for much more. Everett Roos was born in March of 1914 in Oakland, California. He was the second child to parents Christopher, a probation officer, and Stella, an artist and poet. Even from a very young age, Christopher encouraged his son Everett to read as often as possible, as well as to study all the great philosophers throughout history. In no time at all, Everett was already beginning to write literature and poetry himself. However, it was adventure that became Everett's true passion, and he began showing an appetite for it by the age of just 16 years old. During the summer of 1930, Everett even managed to hitchhike all the way from Oakland, California to the town of Carmel-by-the-Sea, an impressive 100-mile journey. Later on, after graduating from Hollywood High School, Everett decided to set out on his first real expedition. Incredibly, over the course of just 10 months, he found his way to iconic locations like the Grand Canyon and Zion National Park. Not only was this trek an ambitious one, but it also set the foundation for future expeditions that Everett would seek out in the years to come. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to the young explorer at the time, his next grand adventure would end up changing everything. In November of 1934, 20-year-old Everett Roos rode into the remote township of Escalante, Utah, accompanied only by his two pack burrows. A tiny settlement that was founded by Mormons in 1876, Escalante wasn't exactly the type of place that strangers visited on a regular basis. Everett made his camp just north of town, pitching his tent in a sunny area along the Escalante River. The townspeople actually visited Everett quite often to make small talk and give the friendly adventurer the lay of the land. The children of Escalante took a particular liking to Everett, and during this time there, he often took them out riding and even treated them to a movie. After spending a few nights in town, Everett decided to pack up his belongings, and then he disappeared out into the Utah frontier. He was never heard from again. So, what happened to the young explorer? Well, in 1999, a man named David Roberts, an adventure writer for National Geographic magazine, set off on a journey of his own in an effort to finally get some answers. The first stop on his investigation? Escalante, Utah. After arriving in town, David sat down with 74-year-old Norm Christensen, one of the local children who was charmed by Everett during his short stay there. Norm, who was only 10 years old at the time, was also one of the last people to see Everett Roos alive. According to Norm, Everett had set off towards the Utah desert after leaving Escalante, traveling southeast along a trail known as the Hole in the Rock. This historic route had been plotted by 19th century Mormon settlers, and it was seen as a tried and true passageway for navigating the harsh desert. David also spoke to a 91-year-old man from Escalante named Melvin Alvey, who had also encountered Everett during his short stay in town all those years ago. Melvin wasn't particularly surprised that Everett had disappeared even as a child. He knew that the young adventurer was probably not equipped to survive the harsh winter climate of the Utah desert. However, historical records indicate that Everett was actually still alive for at least a week after leaving Escalante, even after traveling some 50 miles through the harsh desert. David found that at some point on his journey, Everett had come across two shepherds and some cattlemen, but after that, he simply vanished. Despite his sudden disappearance, red flags weren't raised until almost three months later. This wasn't out of the ordinary, though, as Everett had sent a letter to his family a few weeks prior stating that his journey would likely prevent him from communicating for at least a month or two. However, when the letters that his parents, Christopher and Stella, sent to Marble Canyon, Arizona, the place where Everett expected to re-emerge into civilization, were returned unopened, they immediately grew concerned. After contacting the postmaster, a search party was quickly dispatched from the town of Escalante in March of 1935. Eventually, the same two shepherds that had previously crossed paths with Roos stumbled upon an old campsite that was set up in a canyon known as Davis Gulch. There, Everett's two burrows were found alive, albeit severely malnourished, but there was no sign of the young explorer, his diary, or any of his camping gear. While no trace of Roos was ever found, it's still widely believed that he was murdered at some point while trekking through the desert. 
The group of cattlemen who were the last people to see Everett alive were immediately rumored to be the culprits behind his mysterious disappearance. In fact, Norm Christensen claimed that one of the cattlemen, a man by the name of Keith Riddle, had even confessed to the murder many years ago. Unfortunately, Riddle died in 1984, and no definitive evidence was ever found linking him to the crime. Then, in 2008, 74 years after Everett's disappearance, a tip from a Navajo in the area who claimed to have witnessed the murder led a man named Denny Belson to the remains of a human body at nearby Combe Ridge. The bones, which were found in a crevice nearly 60 miles from Everett's final camping spot, were tested against the DNA of his nieces and nephews, and they came back as a match. Unfortunately, though, in a heartbreaking twist, it was later discovered that the DNA test had been botched and that the remains found near Combe Ridge actually belonged to someone who was Native American. And so, the truth behind Everett Roos's disappearance in the Utah desert still remains a haunting mystery to this day. What do you think happened to Everett? Let us know in the comments section below. And then don't forget to leave us a like and hit subscribe for more.